Hello, and today is uh, Tuesday, the 13th of March, 2012. In today's video, I want to go over a couple of odds and ends before I go over the silver chart. So they're going to be different. So I want to, uh, I'm look, looking forward to looking in the uh, comments section for what you think about these charts. And uh, let's get started. This is a recommendation from Barnard. Uh, I'll try to remember the numbers. 11, 9, 6, 7. And I could easily be wrong on the numbers. But uh, this is the abolishment of the Federal Reserve. Uh, I don't, it doesn't look like the official any type of petitions. After all, we're all in here about awareness issues. For There's 25,000 petition signs that are needed by April the 10th. It's pretty much close to 100% that that will not come about. But the more that sides, the better that it is. But if you want to look at ratio, imagine back in the day, we'll say even 10 years ago, X out of 25,000 people knew what fiat currency meant. Over under 75. I want to go over a couple other, well, just one other chart, an odds and ends kind of deal. This is all... Um, Make belief. Company ABC has a product called ABC Solutions, and this is the amount of vitamin F used per batch and how much they used over the last 20, 125 days. Now, most companies, when they are making products, they put the exact same amount per batch every single time, other than when changes need to be in play, but nothing like this. But let's just presume that this company is. Uh, well, the product's like so off. It's it shouldn't be at twenty. We'll say twenty six and a half units. Maybe it's got to be much higher or much lower for whatever reasons. But the people who decide what these levels are are outside sources. But they they don't really talk too much about the people that use the product on a tangible level. In fact. There can be just a couple of, uh, we'll say, big shots whom, uh, when they want to say something about bringing these levels higher or lower, it gets done. So when they wanted this to go way lower, it got done. But when people found out that this was really way off and the company decided that because it was wrong, are they going to just totally strip this chart and make it all anew? Uh, just a little something to bring up before we get uh, started. Now, this chart in here is the uh, daily chart. It's a daily chart for silver, but it's a little bit different, as you can tell by these colors. It's not a high, open high, low close. Merely, it's mainly a high low, although the close variables are needed for the calculations. Now, I've shown on here a swing chart study in the past where the computer automatically determines if we're in an uptrend or a downtrend. And within an uptrend, it would make the line at the top part and a downtrend on the lower part. So that's exactly what this is. Normally, I do a three period front weighted average for the swing line. This is four. It pretty much doesn't make much of a difference either way. The blue line is a front-weighted 18 period average of closes. And the Fibonacci levels, the small lines, represents the high and low periods that are used and the two significant levels. So within these charts, you, you can't see where it closed, but it gives you a general idea and who is in control of the market because, quite frankly, the game of chart analysis or the way charts move is like a game of chess or Magic the Gathering where one team goes or one player goes and the deck, then they pass the dice over to the next team and so on and so on. So therefore, it's like, okay, you pass the dice here, you go down, a terrible turn, another move here, up, and then nothing here, but boom, big, big turn here. And it just shows you a lot of times where the directions come into play. So therefore, when we look at this right now, the last up move was matched within this down move. But that's all right now that it pretty much was for the length going from here to here was pretty much the same as 
going towards the downside. For three days, going into yesterday, three days of this trying to move into a bullish formation, and today it regained its uh, bearish status by uh, having a period where it had a lower high from yesterday and a lower low from yesterday. I've talked a lot about this significant level from this high and this low. It did find support the first occasion. And what I often state is the more often you test areas of support and resistance, the more likely it is that you take it out. And this is really the neckline for that of the head and shoulders for you got a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. Now if we take a look at the length of this pattern by just drawing a simple little box, we could just scroll this down and that gives us a price objective down to about 28 and a quarter. But I think what's going to be really, really important is going to be this significant level of 30 if of course it does break down below it it uh, needs to get above this high to uh, break the pattern of lower highs let's move this on to the weekly chart and uh, this one's got the dates on the 313 it's been a mess even trying to get the dates on this one here but you can pretty much tell what occurred at what time frame as this of course was last year's high and this was a 2010 breakout period and if we look at the whole chess match in this situation here the bulls have a nice up run and then the bears not so much but they had their turn then the bulls have another spectacular turn as did the bears but not as good as the bulls back in here but they had a good turn a poor turn by the bulls, poor turn by the bears, okay turn, nothing, another okay one, then you got the bears in charge in here, bulls, bears, bulls, and now I've had two consecutive uh, weeks that are on the decline within this uh, form of analysis. Within this Fibonacci level, it's been nothing but perfect analysis amongst the Fibonacci retracement. So therefore, we're at an area now, like I've been stating, this is more of a support area than it is of a resistance like it was before. Even though this is a red level, we do have this 18 period average of closes that is now being used as support with the trend going towards the upside. So because I state the more often support and resistance is tested, the more likely it is take it out. This more likely we take out this level and coming back down, it's more likely we take out this, which really states the odds favor that within the next so many periods, we'll say 20, 30 weeks, that the volatility should really pick up. But what would the chances be that we break below this 26 barrier? Silver Futurist this last week stated it's about 80 percent and quite frankly those probability odds are almost impossible for me to tell it's a lot easier when i'm trying to figure out uh easy information like uh the playing cards for different games like blackjack or uh things of that nature because the odds are so simple but it's very difficult to determine what the chances are will be that this level will break below however what isn't that difficult is that if, keyword is if, because of computer programming, if you, uh, a lot of the important stuff is the if else, because that's the way the world works a lot of times. But if it does break below 26, the likely event, likely is not only greater than 50%, but in this case, probably greater than 70, 80%. The likely event is that the moves would be fast going down below if of course that were to take place else else means we're not even really going down here we'll most likely find a higher low either down here maybe this will be the higher low and then the uh, bull market will resume and i state that because of the significant fibonacci at this level here that would retrace re regain this market 
into that of bullish momentum. Three-day analysis. And uh, now I'm just going to show this one here and move on to the next one, which is the nine-day chart. We'll finish it off within the monthly. And uh, Fibonacci's from this 846 low, holding up really well. And the uh, last uh, five months included, excuse me, the last five periods of nine days, including this one, is in that of an uptrend and back above the uh, 18 uh, period average. So again, you can see here by holding these low, breaking by, and then having a test of this resistance, things can really get going again. And if you're looking for these head and shoulders type of patterns, the uh, inverted head and shoulders pattern that I see as possible would give us a move up to about 42, pull back down about 35, and then you got a pretty large scale inverted head and shoulders pattern, but that's a long ways away. And the only thing, or the why head and shoulders are so significant is because it's an easy way to determine how uh, lows, higher highs and higher lows get switched over or the treads switch over basically. Final chart, which is the monthly chart. And the Fibonacci is from the uh, breakout lows, I think of 1990, oh, 93, 95. And it took a long time to get going, of course, about close to a decade. And during its uh, run towards the upside, we can see within here how it, uh, the nice move towards the upside. And it had about uh, five months of red movements or seven out of eight. But the last two months are starting to uh, get things back in order again. The 18 period moving average of closes is barely going higher but it's been going higher ever since in here and uh, because of that it's at that level it, and when you ever see a moving average go straight and flat like that and you're at the level it's so obvious if it goes higher then the moving average is going to continue to go higher like that but if you come down to a level usually pierce through it and then find an area like that as resistance which is exactly what happened you break through here you find this band as resistance, and if you continue to go lower, then this thing will just turn around sort of like that. And uh, thank you for tuning in to today's video. A little longer than I uh, was planning on, but uh, let me know what you think about this new design. I'm the type of person that I can't stick with the uh, same thing for that long. And it is a copycat world, so I found a similar chart like this, and I looked at its formula. Could not understand it because it just mathematically didn't make sense, but I figured out one that was sort of like it, and this is how we have it. It's a swing line chart with a four-period front-weighted moving average of highs, lows, and closes. And then from there, it determines if it's in an uptrend or a downtrend by if the average was higher than its day from before. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a magnificent week. Bye-bye.